Hey everyone, now we're going to continue our journey into the warehouse. What we're going to do today is we're going to receive um, and in, you know, if you have a PO uh, purchase order and you're going to receive on a purchase order, if you have advanced warehouse, you need to actually create a warehouse receipt from the PO. Um, I'm just going to say you know, WREC. Now you could have many warehouse receipts. Uh, from one PO. That's what makes it kind of cool to have separate, you know, entity that's tracking the receipts from a PO. Let's say uh, you receive short and there's another receipt coming in. You can create a warehouse receipt for the first part and then create another one for the second part even for a different day. So having this uh, multiple records here is, is nice. Now on the warehouse receipt obviously you have, you know, the bin and you got to receive into a particular bin because our location is bin enabled and this is advanced warehousing. And you know, once you receive, you should see, of course, your bin contents being updated. Uh, and we're also going to show you how it works on the app at the same time. So let's take a look at the system. Let's continue our journey with uh, receiving some inventory into our New York warehouse. First, I'm going to go here into the warehouse receipt. Um, and just bookmark that so it shows up on here. And I also want to bookmark the posted receipts and uh, the bin contents. Let's go ahead and bookmark that too. So that's handy because then we have them up here. We can quickly get into it. I have the purchase orders here, sales orders, so I don't have to bookmark those. But that's what I'm going to use in this exercise. So I'm going to go into the purchase order. Let's create a new one. Gotham meat and seafood. There we go. Now Gotham meat and seafood is uh, default going to deliver it to Jersey City, which is not the location that I've set up for the demo. So I want to move that to New York and I am going to get some lamb chunks from them. That would be appropriate since they are meat and seafood. Now let me just go ahead and get uh, 850 pounds. Now uh, obviously, if we were receiving cases and stuff like that, we would have to add that, you know, how many cases, uh, since this is food and this could even be cat's weight, uh, this item is often cat's weight. But uh, in our simple example, we're just going to go with receiving pounds, straight pounds. So here, in order to get this going, I have to release this order. Now it's released and I will have to create a warehouse receipt. Uh, this creates this warehouse receipt header and lines, which is used to interact with the uh, warehouse. So this is important because you could have multiple receipts on the same purchase order. You can see how that many warehouse receipt documents can be created on the same purchase order line. And it's really, really good to have that distinction. This also enables us to set up all kinds of specific warehouse um, properties like are we assigning it to a particular user to, to receive? Is there a sorting method in play? Um, and all kinds of other stuff. But it, we are going to keep it simple. Uh, this created the warehouse receipt. And in our system, on the Unacta Food platform, we have uh, set up so it automatically generates the lot. Uh, because we are using our own lot numbers in this case, uh, the Gotham uh, company. So let me go ahead and receive this on our uh, scanning app. Now I'm using a tablet here. Obviously you would use a scan gun, but this is responsive. So I could practically run it on any device. And since I am just in my office here, I figured using a tablet would be uh, easier to read. So we go ahead and scan in the warehouse receipt, which is um, 10. And so I basically just scanned the warehouse receipt document. I could have scanned also the purchase document. Um, and normally in the warehouse, you would have some kind of label or something which identifies this number so you can scan it and prime the device with you know, what you're about to receive. And it sees that we have the lamb shank coming in from Gotham Meat and Seafood. It's on purchase order number 16. Um, there are 850 pounds to be received. And so now we go ahead and receive that. Just click on that. And since the lot we had already design, uh, decided on or auto assigned, we want to use that. And we are going to receive everything. All of the 850 pounds came in. In this case, we're not going to get into pallets. Um, just going to leave that empty so this doesn't come in on a pallet. And then we just go ahead and post. Now, 
this is now received. Now let me close out of this. And let's just take a look at uh, where we're at. So if I go into the purchase order again, I can now see that 850 has been received. Now, if I go into the posted receipt, where I was posted receipt, I could print that out as well. So this is actually in the system. So the latest one is probably the one that we have. Um, here it is, it's received. Now people don't print anything out uh, anymore or not much, but it is possible. So also, if we go into bin contents and uh, take a look at the lamb shack, which should be now in the receiving bin. So let me just go ahead and um, go back and double check what that number was. That was 11.05. So we go bin contents into the receiving bin and you should see 11.05 right here. Now this is uh, accruing all of the you know receipts that we have done for 11.05 into the receiving bin in pounds. So that's 6,000, that's more than the 850 that I did, but if I drill into that, I can see um, my 850 is right here, received, that's 204. Uh, we have several other lot numbers in receiving bin uh, and these are the PO numbers that they came in on. So this is all interconnected and the app clearly posted the information into our uh, location. And now we have 850 pounds of lamb shank, lamb shanks <laughs> in the receiving bin in the New York location.